we have our 12 volt power supply, we have our 5 volt power supply, our relay, and our motor with some shoelace and a landscaping pin. Let's set it. Oh man. Before I start off this video, I just want to make a public service announcement to never eat a foot long steak melt from Stub Subway with garlic aioli sauce. It's really filling. Anyway, good afternoon. Welcome to the channel. One week ago, approximately, I was presented with an opportunity, a very peculiar opportunity. You see, there was a gentleman by the name of Andrew who knew a guy who knew a guy who knew another guy who was a quadriplegic. He wanted to play a game that involved pulling a pin out of a catapult. However, since he's a quadriplegic, he cannot, unfortunately. So this gentleman, Andrew, approached my dad, whom he works with as a colleague, and asked him, hey, do you know a guy? And that guy is me. So today, I'm gonna show you how to make a voice activated catapult that launches from saying fire or any loud noise, really. Anything. You can just fucking fart on it and it'll fucking go, bro. It'll fucking go wherever the fuck you want. And here is the catapult that Andrew built. It is actually quite the piece of craftsmanship, I will say. Brown wood, just painted, it's got these little leather things on there, you know, it's pretty cool. It's nice. But unfortunately, quadriplegics can't launch it. That's where I come in. Alright, now when we're hooking it up, I like to, you know, make sure the 5 volt is working first so that I don't put the high power on and then accidentally make like a noise or something and the relay trips and then pulls my finger off or something. I don't know, I don't want that. Not a huge fan of that. So what we're going to do is we have our landscaping pin, we have tied to a shoelace, very high tech. So right here, right here, you can't touch it though, you can't touch it or do anything because it'll flip out. It'll flip this guy out and make him really angry. But this is the voice activated switch, if you will. It in effect performs the same function of an actual relay, but in a solid state format. It has a microphone, an optocoupler, two potentiometers, and three outputs. That sub is really hitting hard. Ooh. To this guy, this is the actual voice module, which will be recognizing speech. Now I say speech rather cavalierly because this is simply just recognizing noise. And once the noise reaches a certain threshold, it activates a little miniature NPN diode on there, closes the circuit to the signal, and activates the relay. Originally, I was going to use an Arduino to perform this with some simple Java coding here and there, but I figured, nah, we don't need to do that. We already have Chinese kindergartners making that stuff for us in our factories. Speaking of Chinese factories, I got a motor off of Amazon and it has enough torque. You see before, I tried making one of my own out of just some dinky little $3.50 motor I got off of American Science and Surplus and 3D printed a, a little guide onto there. No can do buddy, this thing does not have enough torque to pull a catapult. So there was some physics involved. Metal, when being pushed against a very thin piece of metal, it creates a lot of weight, a lot of drag, especially if you're going to pull it out. Andrew simply drilled through these pieces of metal. I 3D printed some little adapters here. So these adapters are here to greatly reduce the drag coefficient from this here landscaping pin. This is what I insert to actually set 
the catapult. The way Andrew did it before was he has a little bolt that he simply ground down and put a little bit of a kite string through it. Now this is, this is pretty genius because he's actually distributing all the weight across a larger area, which in effect reduces the amount of friction for pulling. However, when you have a very thin object like so, there's gonna be a little bit more friction, unfortunately. So the set procedure is relatively simple. The two potentiometers on that are actually very useful. One adjusts the amount of time for when something triggers it, the amount of time that it actually triggers for. For all intents and purposes, we don't need this motor on for half an hour. We only need it on for three seconds. Otherwise, it's gonna sit there spinning with a freaking landscaping pin coming at it at about 3,500 RPM. At about 7,000 RPM. Which we don't want, that's, that's, we don't need that. I originally went with some kite string. That didn't work because it frayed and it, when you twist it too often, it just, it just snaps. But shoelaces, especially Adidas shoelaces, work fantastically. So let's set it. Fire! That was embarrassing. Fire! <laughs> So it works. I need to adjust the sensitivity a little because I mean, you can blow on it like. Oh, I forgot to, I completely forgot to mention the second catapult. So not only did he tell me that I needed to make one for a large catapult, I also needed to make one for a small little model catapult. Now this one is relatively simple, you know, it, it has this little set piece right here, goes along this slotted gear, whatever you want to call that. I'm not good with terminology at all. And all you need to do is really just push it and then it relieves the tension. Now, this won't require a huge motor. This will simply require the exact same mechanism as used prior with a relay, the voice module, a power supply, but this time with a solenoid. Fire. There we have it. Easy enough.